Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Savita Engineering College, I welcome you all for this webinar series four. So today's session is going to be Finland is the right person, Dr. C. Steve Joyce, Associate Dean, Savita Teaching and Learning Center. Welcome, ma'am. Hello. Thank you, sir. Good evening. audible? Shiva Bham, is it audible? Yes, sir. You're audible. Oh, okay, okay. You're audible, so, sir. Now, okay. I would, I would like to request uh, Bhattopriya, ma'am, to introduce today's guest. A pleasant evening, one and all present here. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce the guest of the day. Dr. Shiba Joyce completed her undergraduation in electrical and electronics engineering from Madras University in the year 1998 and completed her post-graduation in applied electronics from Anna University, Chennai in the year 2007. She was awarded Doctor of Philosophy from Anna University for her work in embedded control of drives in 2012. She is a supervisor at Anna University and has five research scholars. She has a teaching experience of 21 years. She has published 12 papers in peer-reviewed journals, including one paper in IEEE Transactions on Industrial Informatics. Her research interests include embedded systems, digital image processing, and engineering education. She has completed the IUCWE International Engineering Educators Certification Program, WIWCP, with distinction in the year 2019. She is a peer reviewer for several journals, and peer evaluator of WIWCP capstone presentation. She has organized several faculty pro development programs and been a resource person in the domain of teaching and learning in both face-to-face -face mode and online mode. Recently, she organized an ACT approved two-week FDB on creative pedagogy and its significance in engineering education. Her vision is to bring forth a generation of industry-ready engineers with excellent values to provide innovative and add simple engineering solution that makes life better for the people across India. Currently, she is working as Associate Dean, Savita Teaching Learning Center, Professor and Deputy Head of Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Savita Engineering College, Chennai. It's a pleasure to have you with us today, ma'am. Thank you, Priya, for the wonderful introduction. Shall we proceed, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Shall, Thank shall you. I share the screen? Yes, yes, ma'am. Warm greetings from Savita Engineering College. So here we are an autonomous institution. We are affiliated to Anna University and approved by AACTE. So this is one of our building, the main building of our campus, the beautiful round building. And I am Sheba Joyce. Savita Medical and Educational Trust, SMET, established by Dr. N. M. Virayan, a dedicated medical professional in the year 1986. Savita Engineering College, as we call it as SEC, was established by SMET in the year 2001. These are the undergraduate courses that we offer. BE Agriculture Engineering, BTEC Artificial Intelligence and Data Science, BE Biomedical, BE Chemical, Computer Science, Civil Engineering, Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Electronics and Communication Engineering, Electronics and Instrumentation Engineering, Information Technology, Mechanical Engineering, and Medical Electronics. We also offer postgraduate courses in Engineering and Master of Business Administration, MBA. Our vision is to be and to be recognized for setting the standard of excellence in Engineering, Education, and High Quality Research in Science and Technology. Our mission is to promote academic excellence, widen intellectual horizon, inculcate self-discipline, and high ideals for the total personality development of the individual. 
So today's session is Finland education system at SEC. Less is more. I would like to welcome you all for this wonderful session. We are practicing certain things in our college. So we would like to share with you what are the wonderful things that we are doing in our campus. So I invite you all to the session to travel with me in our journey of excellence. Why Finland? Why should we take Finland education as a model? It is because we found out in higher education, Finland leads the world. This is according university's 21 ranking. So the overall ranking is on education systems absolute performance. They have taken 24 indicators to evaluate the performance of an education system. They are, they can be classified into four categories, namely the resources, environment, connectivity and output. Based on all these indicators, Finland leads the world. Even though it's a very small country, it is leading the world in higher education. This is according to the latest ranking of Universitas 21 overall ranking around the globe. So we thought it is better to adopt certain wonderful models that Finland has in their education into our curriculum. That will, we thought that will help us in our journey of excellence. So what are the parameters that we are going to compare today? In Finland education model, there are different teaching methods. We are going to compare about the learners and we are also going to compare about the faculty. So these are the three main components on which we will concentrate and we will compare how Savita Engineering College is in comparison with Finland education model. So let's go on. So the first one is teaching methods. So in Finland, we call it to be Finnish. So Finnish classrooms are learner centric. So what do we mean by learner centric? Learner is at the center. So learner at the center means learner takes the prime importance. So the learner has got all options. It is all competency based. It is not in by any priority basis. It is all competency based. It is all the curriculum will all be real world relevant to the technology relevant to the latest trend. And student will have the ownership of what he or she is studying. He or she will have a positive identity in the in the learning and all the foundational needs of the learner will be met. So for us, learner forms the main part of teaching. So he or she takes the center platform of teaching. So in our SEC classrooms also, our teaching methods are learner centric. We should know that there are two types of teaching, namely learner centric and teacher centric. In teacher centric, everything depends on the teacher according to whatever she wishes, according to whatever he or she knows and all that. Now, here, when you say learner centric, it all depends on the learner. So based on the learner, the classes is going to happen. Let's see how are we achieving it in SEC. So here in learner centric, we are providing experiential learning. We also provide personalized learning. And there is also one more thing called as Mela. Let's see one by one. Experiential learning. So what is experiential learning? Let's say for example, you want to buy a car or a two wheeler. What will you do? Before purchasing a car, you will try different reviews from different channels from different YouTubers and all that. But with that will we be buy? Will we buy? Definitely no. So we would like to take a test drive of the car or of the two wheeler. So unless we take a test drive, we will not be able to know what is the comfort that it is going to give. What is the safety that it is going to give? What are the wonderful features that I can feel? So on and only if I experience it, I'll be convinced with what I'm going to buy. So the same way, if at all, we are going to see whatever we are studying theoretically, if at all, I'm going to practice it, then I can get convinced whatever I'm learning is correct. And only if I'm doing something, I'll be able to understand, I'll also be able to remember. So for all this to happen, what we are doing is we are integrating the theory courses 
along with practical courses. Being an autonomous institution, we have this capability of integrating the courses. We have the privilege of integrating the practical courses along with theory. So most of the courses that we offer are integrated with practical courses. So you can, the student, the learner can directly practice whatever they are teaching. Now you can see electron devices. This was handled by Dr. Selvi and she has handled this course and you can see the students are practicing it in the class. So it is right away they are practicing what they are learning, which means they'll be able to understand and they'll also be able to remember. So this we call it to be experiential learning. And then we move on to personalized learning. What is this personalized learning? Something like customized learning. So there are different learners. Right now we've got uh, many participants and each one definitely will be a different learner. Each one is unique. We understand that. So here we can see different learners. First one, visual learners. So who are they visual learners? Visual is only if they see, they'll be able to understand. Or only if they see, they'll be able to get along with the concept. So we call them as visual learners. And the second category of learners will be auditory learners. They are very good in listening. So if they just listen something, they'll be able to reproduce or rewrite whatever they have listened. So they are called as auditory learners. And the next type of learners are reading and writing learners who, unless and otherwise they read it from the textbook or write it into their notebook, they won't be able to take it anything into my mind. So that, so that we call it to be reading or writing learners. And finally, we have kinesthetic learners. On and only if they practice what they had learned, they will not go by it. So that is what you call it to be kinesthetic learners. So we, we have understood, we faculty at Savita have understood that each learner is unique and they have different capabilities of learning. So these are the four different types of learning and we call it to be VARK model. So all our faculty teaches a particular concept so that all learners will be able to understand it. So this is, this is what we call it to be personalized learning or customized learning. Another one, this is uh, very unique to our campus, our uh, Savita institutions. Ma'am, ma yes, there is a window blocking on the top, maybe sticky note or something. Just I don't, it. I don't have anything, sir. I, I am also wondering from where from it is coming. Yes, I don't know. That something is getting. Uh, Please move this window. I don't know. I, I am also getting it, but I don't know where from. Nothing is open, okay. sir. Okay, ma'am. No okay, sir. Thank you. So, multiple interactive learning algorithm, MILA. So, we call it to be MILA. So, this is very unique to Savita group of institutions. And what is that here? This is all about different pedagogies which, I, which, I, which our faculty use. So, what are the different pedagogies? One, we call it to be collaborative learning. So, in that we have Jigsaw, Think, Pair, Share, Role Play, Fogel, which is nothing but process-oriented, guided inquiry learning. And the last one will be flip class. So what is a flip class? We just flip. So whatever is done in the class, usually, traditionally, whatever is done in the class, it will be done at home. And whatever should be done at home, it will be done at class. For example, homework should be done at home. Teacher has to talk in the class. So what we do is, Recorded lectures will be given to the students. They can listen at home and they come and work out the homework problems or tutorial problems inside the class with the help of the faculty and with the help of their friends. So it will be easy for them to understand. So we call them to be flip class where we flip the class and home. The teacher comes to your home and the student comes to the class and learns it in an uh, alternate way. So that we call it to be flip class. So these are the different type of pedagogical methods that we are trying in our campus. And we have already tried it. It is already implemented and we are going on. One experimental batch we tried and we found out the Anna University results were so good. It was, uh, we divided into experimental group and a traditional group. So 150 students formed under your experimental group. Another 150 students were in the traditional class. So we could see wonderful result uh, improvement in the result. 
okay 85 percentage was the result from a mila implemented classes and 75 percentage was the was in the other traditional classes so we were able to prove that multiple interactive learning algorithm have worked out wonderfully so these are just examples where this is my own class where we have uh, where i have implemented role play to uh, make understand a simple concept of binary adders since we made it as role play the student were able to grasp the concepts very very easily so even though it's a difficult uh, concept they were able to follow it very easily because we did it using role play so again in a finland model you can see the learners they all sit in a group they work collaboratively in teams on projects here also at sec we encourage this interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary projects so when you do a mini projects or even if for your main project at the end of the sem a course you can combine with students of other branches as well which is not permitted in other colleges or other affiliated colleges so here this is going to be because no stream is going to be independent hereafter all the streams are just going to be interrelated with each other so it is always better to have interdisciplinary approach and we at savita encourage this so you can see people working students are working in collaborative learning they are doing a particular activity which was given in the class it is not going to be a regular classroom they are in the lab so in the lab theory will be taught in the lab their activities will be taken place inside the class also activities take place so you can see how collaboratively students are engaged and actively they involve themselves to learn the concepts so this is the method that we are adopted in savita so these are all few examples of how students are learning collaboratively and then regarding learners in finland what happens is they design their own learning activities so when they design their own learning activities means what they themselves select what is the content that they want to learn in which domain are they interested so according to their interest they can start learning they can select a course and they can start learning so that is what is adopted in finland that is the main criteria for the success that is the uh, that is the main uh, focus for their success so here in savita we also provide that privilege to our students so that is what we call it to be choice based credit system so what is this choice based choice means what we have options so we have options to select the courses what are the courses that you want to study you can select so we are going to give you a set of courses out of which you can select which are the course that you want to study and which semester you want to study so that is also in your hands so that is the wonderful feature of choice based credit system one more option also we give that is faculty with which faculty you want to learn so there are going to be lots of faculty members offering a single course and you can select based on their previous experience based on the previous uh, i mean input from your seniors you can select which faculty will teach that course better so you have that option of selecting the course and you also have the option of selecting the faculty you also have the option of studying a particular course in whichever semester you feel like so all these are possible in savita because we have adopted this finland model and again regarding the faculty so for all this faculty will be the main course and here you can see in finland autonomy is given to faculty so what do you mean by autonomy they can select they can frame the syllabus they can give the textbooks of their choice and they can take the classes in which way way they feel like so all that is also available in savita so our faculty have taken wonderful initiative to frame the syllabus so all of us have taken put in lot of efforts to frame the curriculum and the syllabus for each and every course so that is the main um, importance of our curriculum and then when you say the mentor so in finland what is the uh, thing they adopt is as a mentor for six for say for six or seven years the same uh, faculty or the same uh, teacher will be in charge for a particular set of students so what is the purpose of this they'll be able to understand the student very well the strengths of the student the weakness of the student all the qualities of the student the mentor will know wonder very perfectly so this will help the faculty to guide the student in whichever way they have to go so this is the best option 
so we thought that is also good for us so we have selected that also so as soon as the student gets admitted in savita one mentor will be assigned to that student and the entire four years that mentor will be traveling along with them for all the four years which means when you enter first year you an as a mentor is assigned to you the same mentor will be carried on so second year also you even if you go to second year the same mentor will be responsible for you when you move on to third year again the same mentor until you pass out of the course you will have the same mentor who will be able to guide you properly to select which course to select which faculty at which time you should select the uh, which course you should select at which semester so to guide all this we have got lots of extra curricular activities integrated into the curriculum so when you need to select all this so proper guidance will be given by our mentor so they are not only just faculty there will be a facilitators to help you throughout and for all this what we need we need a well qualified and well trained faculty members in finland they have that and same way at savita we have got very well qualified and well trained faculty members that is the strength of savita engineering college and we'll move on less is more this is again a part of our title so what is less is more we have heard this statement frequently so we'll see what is less and what is more so here in finland fewer instruction hours are given which means lot of planning time is available for the faculty fewer classes are given which means more break times are there so break times means we can we can just be relaxed when we relax and come back to the classes or we'll be able to listen to the class more uh, wonderfully so that is why fewer classes and more breaks less testing and more of learning time is given more time is given for learning rather than writing tests and tests and tests i understand many of you would have written lot of tests before you have come to this stage so here learning takes the prime importance rather than testing and then topics are less so it doesn't mean when the topics are less uh, we are not going to learn anything but the depth in each topic is going to be more so when i learn a topic i am going to understand the complete concept of it so the depth is going to be more so that we call it to be fewer topics are more depth less homework wonderful right so all of us enjoy this when there is less homework more time to engage in other activities so less homework and more participation and fewer students which means more individual attention all these are the positives of finland and we are also trying to implement that in our curriculum so how it, what is the education model at savita again we practice less is more so here we have 30 learners per classroom which means more concentration the uh, faculty members can concentrate wonderfully for each learner usually the number of students in a class will be more here since the theory classes are going to be integrated with practical it will be always better if you are going to have less number of students in a particular classroom so we have 30 learners per classroom for all the classes which are integrated with practicals so next is number of credits i'll explain to you about credits in further slides so 160 credits so usually in affiliated course affiliated colleges and university affiliated colleges the number of credits is going to be around 184 which means the time spent in learning different subjects is going to be more we are reducing it as i told you earlier we are going to concentrate on the basics and the in depth knowledge will be given so a t shaped model so what is this t shaped model basic knowledge and skills we are going to do it wonderfully we are going to take much time concentrate more on the basic knowledge and skills that have to be developed and and for we choose a particular domain and go into the depth of it so in each and every domain that we select we'll go into the depth of it so this is what we call it to be t shaped model and thus again we adopt it in savita so what is a philosophy our philosophy is evolve lifelong learners by imparting 21st century skills and meeting industry 4.0 requirements i think few terms are really new to some of us so let's see each one one by one we'll see the terms lifelong learners 21st century skills and industry 4.0 now let's see what is 21st century skills right now we are living in the 21st century so what are the skills that we need to acquire 
as a student as a faculty as a participant what are the skills in this century that is required so the 21st century skills can be classified as learning skills literacy skills and life skills we will see one by one learning skills so learning skills first one will be critical thinking i should be able to find out different solutions creative thinking i'll have to find out innovative solutions innovative ideas collaborating and communicating all these are the learning skills that each learner should have each student should have and what about literacy again we can see information literacy media literacy and technology literacy so information media technology everything is available it is not like in the previous centuries where we where we need to go to library where we need to go and search of books no everything is there in our palm everything we have it in our hand the technology without technology we cannot even uh, talk like this we cannot attend a session like this so everything is there around but i should have the wisdom and knowledge to select which one will suit me the best which one is going to improvise my knowledge which one is going to inculcate knowledge and skills in me so that is where my literacy lies so these are the literacy skills which we need to be aware of and in the life skills finally in the 21st century we need to have these following life skills so what are the life skills that we need to have flexibility where we need to accustom with others while we are working or while we are uh, surviving all these skills are definitely required for our survival next is initiative i should not be waiting for someone to ask me to take some work and do i should have that initiativeness i should have that uh, in, uh, skill to initiate a particular work i should have score social skills where i mingle with others very easily some of us find it very difficult to uh, talk with others or to start a conversation that is not going to help us in this century so we need to improve our social skills we should also improve our productivity how we are going to improve the skill that we have and finally leadership which is definitely essential for anyone unless we have the skill we won't be able to survive in this current scenario so now again we saw to evolve lifelong learners by imparting 21st century skills so these are the 21st century skills that we need to acquire and in savita we are working we are seeing to that that all our learners acquire all these 21st century skills all these will be imbibed in the curriculum itself so everything is part of the curriculum so it definitely by the end of the course you will acquire all these skills so we'll move on to meet industry 4.0 requirements what is industry 4.0 requirements at the end of the course what for we all are studying only to be employable so to make us employable we have a placement uh, cell where they are going to make you employed they'll help you in your in the, your employment but you need to be ready you need to be prepared for that so what is industry 4.0 let's see so we all know about industrial revolution so industry 1 we before going on to 4.0 let's see what is industry 1.0 the first industrial revolution took place in the year 1780s so what was that it was mechanization so wheel was invented but now it was mechanized so mechanical engineering flourished in this particular era so mechanization steam power using the power of steam steam engine and weaving loom all were introduced in the 1780s which improved our lifestyle so this is the first industrial revolution which happened in 1780s now we'll move on industry 2.0 the second industrial revolution where did it happen it was it happened during the year 1880s so almost 100 years apart so what was here what was so specific here electrical energy was used so this helped us to produce in mass so mass production assembly line where you can have conveyor belts and since it is product produced in a mass way we need to have a conveyor belt to move on so electrical energy was used so electrical engineering flourished during this year so industry 2.0 this is your second industrial revolution again we move on to industry 3.0 
it was in 1980s you can see another 100 years have gone now you can see another 100 years what has happened it was the automation complete automation of the things computers were brought in electronics were brought in so because of this there was a third industrial revolution now we have proceeded into currently we are in industry 4.0 all industries are using this you would have heard about this term iot internet of things networking of machines cyber physical systems so all these cyber security all these are industry 4.0 so this has happened in 2010s you see the massive difference previously it was 100 years for every industrial revolution now between industry 3.0 and industry 4.0 there is only 30 years of difference so that is the speed at which we are going to change so we need to be prepared to accustom to this industry if you are not updated we will become obsolete so we have understood very well we have understood this concept very well in savita so what we have done is we have incorporated all these important topics into our curriculum so if you are going to study at savita all these will become part of your course so that is what you call it to be industry 4.0 ready so what is industry 4.0 in detail let us see they are additive manufacturing virtual reality internet of things autonomous robots cyber security cloud computing big data advanced simulation universal integration all these are part of your industry 4.0 currently all the industries are taking care of these concepts so all these are already into our industries so our students should know all the details all the concepts about this so individual courses will be there for on all these emerging trends into our curriculum it is already embedded in part of our curriculum now it is going to be industry 5.0 from 4.0 within a short time i said 2010s was industry 4.0 within a short time we are moving into industry 5.0 as well so what is this industry 5.0 it is the collaboration of human being with robots so you can see robots are going to work along with us so we should know th those concepts as well so for all this what is required lifelong learning you see here by 2030 2 billion jobs will disappear or roughly 50 percentage of all the jobs on the planet will disappear as a result of technology advances but we need not be afraid of the situation why because within 11 years we are going to get new jobs 85 percentage of jobs you are going to get new which are not yet invented we do not know what type of jobs it will be so what does all this mean knowledge is doubling you can see the knowledge this you call it to be knowledge doubling curve what has happened here in 1900 knowledge was doubling every century yes now in, we will move on to 1945 what has happened there knowledge is doubling every 25 years again we'll further move on knowledge is doubling every 12 to 13 months in 1982 right now we are in 2020 see the doubling pattern ibm has predicted knowledge doubling every 11 to 12 hours so as and when we talk now the knowledge is going to double so that is what is the speed in which the knowledge is getting doubled so what should we do then we should be a lifelong learner unless we learn every day we can never win anything a lifelong learner is a lifelong winner so to achieve all this we have focused our curriculum will be a ever transforming curriculum where will be a keep on updating so here we can see wuka so an opportunity for growth what is this is this a new term for us some of us might know it for those who do not know let me explain what it is so first v stands for volatility so what is this volatile volatility in the current scenario everything is volatile nothing is permanent so here we are in a totally confused state what am i going to do now what am i supposed to do for this we need to have clear vision so as i told you earlier the very first slide our college has got a very clear vision so 
in that case we'll be able to take you all take our students in a very correct path so that they can be equipped they'll be employed wherever they go they can sustain in their career and then we'll move on you you for uncertainty entire world is uncertain we have never imagined that we'll be in this condition in total pandemic situation complete lockdown we have never ever imagined that situation we do not know what is going to happen next moment so our life is totally uncertain in that scenario also if at all we are able to understand what we are going to do how we are going to do if you are clear in that we'll be able to proceed forward without any uh, issues the next c stands for your complexity the entire world around us has got complex problems entire career is going to be a totally complicated one again how to get a clear thing we'll have clarity so if at all we have a clear vision of understanding vision and understanding will also have clarity if we have clarity we'll have definite opportunity for growth and we need not worry about anything and the final one is ambiguity ambiguity is we do not know what is what who is going to tell what how i am going to get responded all these are called to be ambiguity so again if at all i have agility what is agility ability to sustain so whatever come the situation i should be able to sustain in that position and work towards my growth work towards my growth in career so this is what we call it to be lifelong learning so unless we are going to have this lifelong learning we won't be able to survive in the current scenario so keeping all this in mind we have designed our curriculum so what is a curriculum first we should know that right so the subjects comprising of course of study in a school or college is called as a curriculum this is according to the dictionary so we are going to frame different courses that are going to be part of this curriculum so how do we do it we'll also know the definition of credit so because we i told you in the earlier slide choice based credit system so we should know what is a credit so credit is a unit by which the course work is measured so how am i going to measure the number of courses that i am going to study that is what is a credit so number of hours of instructions or class required per week is called as credit so say if i am going to say a particular course digital electronics it is going to be a three credit paper which means what i will study the three credit that paper digital electronics three hours per week so only three hours i'll be studying that course in a week so this i call it to be three credit course so similarly we have when i say 160 credits that many number of courses will be there right so we will proceed on so our curriculum as i told we are working for skills uh, life skills and we are working for, i mean uh, 21st century skills and we are working towards industry 4.0 and we should also be a lifelong learner keeping all this in mind we have framed the curriculum so our curriculum is a continuous evolving one because we need to learn lifelong and then it is based on specific needs specific needs of whom specific needs of the learner specific needs of the faculty specific needs of the industry specific needs of the employer so or keeping all this in mind keeping all our stakeholders in mind we have framed the curriculum and it is democratically conceived that is all faculty each faculty member has got the right to frame the course and they have given their suggestions and it was all all the suggestions were accepted so this is what we mean by democratically conceived and then long term effort we have taken so much of effort to bring all these components into the curriculum and as i told you earlier our curriculum is a completely flexible one where you have the option of selecting the faculty selecting the course and selecting the time at which you will be studying the course so we call this system to be flexible choice based credit system so total number of credits will be 160 plus or minus 160 plus 4 164 165 that will be our base so the basic minimum credit will be 160 so to begin with the end in mind means to start the clear understanding of your destination 
So most of us will know there is a book called as Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which is written by Stephen Covey. So the first and foremost habit is to begin with the end in mind. So unless I know what is my destination, I won't be able to have a. I will not be able to take uh, know which route I should travel. So I should know what is going to be my end. So keeping that in mind, we have started framing the curriculum, and that is what we call it to be backward design. So here, what is that backward design? We have found out the first step was identify the desired results. What is my end? What do I want to achieve? What should my student know? So that was my first end. So that is my identify desired results. We have identified that first. Keeping that in mind, we need to measure it. How will I measure whether we have achieved? So for that, we need to have proper assessments. So that is what is determine acceptable evidence. It has to be acceptable by all the stakeholders. So we need to prepare proper assessment, and then we move on to writing the content of it. And then how am I going to take that concept? How am I going to teach it in the class? So all these things follows. So this type of design in the curriculum we call it to be backward design. starting with identifying the desired results determining the acceptable evidence and then plan learning experiences and instruction so this we call it to be backward design we have implemented backward design in framing in designing our curriculum so what are the different categories in our curriculum the first category is humanities and social sciences where we have the papers which courses offered by english department and management department then the next category will be basic sciences here you can see the basic sciences the courses like mathematics physics and chemistry they are all branch specific usually if you see the curriculum of other institutions you will have one common mathematics engineering mathematics one engineering mathematics two three four likewise which is common across all branches here we don't do like that we have specific mathematics for each branch so computer science student will be studying a different mathematics and agriculture student will be studying a different mathematics and electronics and communication engineering student will be studying a different mathematics why is this so because each branch is unique each branch is different so based on the requirement of that particular branch we have designed the curriculum for design the syllabus for mathematics similarly we have done it for physics and similarly for chemistry so we cannot say that a particular course is common for all branches no so each uh, course is designed specifically our faculty have taken extra efforts have put in lot of efforts to design these courses and we also have biology what is the purpose of biology in an engineering college biology is we should understand biology the basics of biology because we have few courses like artificial intelligence where we need to know about brain biomedical students are going to design a medical apparatus for that they should know the parts of the body so for all this biology is more important so we have introduced biology as part of our curriculum and then we have engineering sciences this is the third category where all the fundamental courses required for engineering will come under this category again options will be given and student can select whichever fundamental course he wants to we will have certain courses that are really necessary and there will not be any option for that you need to study that but we have few courses which you can omit as well then we move on to professional core so this is the core essence of the branch that you are studying so in that case here you will definitely not have any options you will have to study all the courses that are offered in professional core no options for this professional core because that is the basic crux of your branch we'll move on here we have professional electives as you know by the term electives means you can select the subject here it is totally domain based so if you want to go into a particular domain if you want to get specialized in a particular domain so in that case you can select that domain based so in a particular domain you will have five or six courses you can take all six courses and study in that domain so you'll be specialized in particular domain so you have the flexibility in choosing domain each branch will have five or six domains and you can select a particular domain and study in depth of it you do you remember the t shaped model this is what i mean by t shaped model say for example say a particular learner 
doesn't want to study one particular domain in depth but wants to have an idea of all the domains that is also permitted as i said it is completely learner centric you can select whichever course you want to do so again if a student wants to study all the domains then that is also permitted so these options are all available in our curriculum and again when we proceed on to open electives open electives is common all the students can study any branch student can study this this is the wonderful category which our student loves so what are they here you have interdisciplinary courses say if a computer science student is interested in studying a mechanical paper he can study that or an agriculture student is interested in studying a, a biomedical paper he he or she can do that so this is what we call it to be interdisciplinary any branch student can study any paper of their his or her choice so this you call it to be interdisciplinary then we 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 are more interested in the holistic approach which means the holistic development of the learner not only engineering only engineering cannot make you a successful uh, career it will not help you in your future you should also have all other components into it you should love your learning so you should enjoy your learning so for all that you should have a holistic approach for that we are offering also we are also offering courses in arts we are all, like mime mime theater and all are there you also have offer courses on heritage about sports we offer a course on yoga we offer a course on psychology and we do offer courses on foreign languages so we have courses like french japanese and german both basics and advanced so if you want to study one of these courses you can very well enroll in one and learn these courses so what is the purpose of learning a foreign language say if you want to get employed in Jap uh, japan so you need to know japanese so very few takers are there for japanese uh, in india if you see only very few of them know japanese but at in japan there are lot of opportunities job opportunities for engineers if at all they know the language so in that case if you if you could learn japanese it is going to help you a lot so here this is all going to add to your credit you need not go out and learn something here it is going to add on to your credits your it is part of the curriculum itself so this is one major advantage and this is what we have incorporated into our curriculum to bring in a holistic approach moreover we also have nss uh, internship industrial visit in plant writing all these are all brought into the curriculum and for all these you can earn your credits it is not just simply apart from the curriculum it is all embedded into the curriculum where you will have the opportunity to learn and earn credits and you also have employability enhancement courses which is again um, is a plays a very vital role in your employment so here we have a separate team for training and separate team for placing you placement team is there training team is there so training team will train you for the entire eight semesters seven semesters almost at the end of six semester our placement team will take you for will offer you different placement opportunities so every semester you have courses which is offered by the training department where which will enhance your employability skills almost 20 credits are allotted out of 160 20 credits are allotted just to enhance your skill which is very essential to be employable so to achieve all this what is the main thing that is important is our faculty our faculty as i told earlier are all well qualified and well trained so for that we have one center called as savita teaching learning center i am so proud to say that we have established in 2017 and we are the only self financing college that has this center no other self financing college has got a teaching learning center in their campus so what is the mission of our savita teaching learning center it is to provide holistic approach in graduating teacher centric educators to learner centric educators i hope you remember that we are we are working only for learner centric curriculum learner centered teaching everything revolves around learner and our mission is also to build a brand of students who will enjoy learning and establish themselves to constructively contribute in the field of engineering this is the mission of savita teaching learning center stlc these are the objectives of stlc they are to become facilitators to encourage self learning to keep oneself updated to equip the learners 
to be trained to utilize pedagogical tools to be motivated to create self learners highly committed to the profession able to encourage learners to become inquisitive and innovative study and develop customized modules to provide platform to exhibit their learning all these are objectives of savita teaching learning center and our faculty members are all well trained by savita teaching learning center so we all have collaborations stlc also has collaborations with yundo universal collaboration for engineering education where their founders are in us so this is an international platform where we have got wonderful exposure to international uh, faculty members and we can learn from them we can learn the different pedagogical methods from them so this is the advantage of being part of this iuc membership and we are also in collaboration with iit madras where they also are interested in uh, improving the pedagogical methods so you can see we are a consortium member and this is our latest uh, consortium member certificate so with this with this privilege our faculty members most of them almost 70% of our faculty members are certified in this IIEEE program and you can see this is one of our program IIEEE certified training program which happened at our savita teaching learning center we have got a separate venue with 30 systems and wonderful uh, 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 wonderful venue for this you can see the collaborative tables here a faculty training is going on at stlc this is the venue of our stlc faculty training is going on most of our faculty members are taking part in different programs that is organized by stlc and this is at iitm as i told you we have collaboration with iit madras and our faculty members are also trained there and this is a faculty dr edamna prasad uh, who is a faculty at iit madras and he is in charge of teaching learning center there and he is taking classes for us so our faculty members are well trained in all this and because of this strength our faculty is our strength and with this we are able to achieve whatever i told so far if you are not willing to learn no one can help you if you are determined to learn no one can stop you with this i would like to close and thank you for listening thank you thank you ma'am that was a fantastic session and uh, uh, you have gone through the complete uh, way of uh, education which happens at savita so it it was throwing light on all the highlighting factors and thanks for that and uh, it was uh, a comparison with the international standard and that was also useful audience if you have uh, any queries or any discussion with madam you can ask you can type in your chat or if you want you can raise your hand so that you can be uh, unmuted to discuss something kausalya you have raised your hand do you want to talk okay let me unmute kausalya hello kausalya hello kausalya no i think it's not there saranya you are unmuted saranya you can you can talk now hello talk yes right. hello saranya yes no problem saranya please talk nothing sir sorry okay 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 manikanda as manikanda you are you are unmuted now please yeah. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Mm. Any interviews skills you are told? I'm not able to get a question. 
ఇంటర్వ్యూ ఇంటర్వ్యూ స్కిల్స్ అంటే వాట్ ఇస్ అన్ ఇంటర్వ్యూ సమ్ అడ్వాంటేजेस want to know about uh... yeah, talked about uh, life skills he is asking what are the interview skills required okay yes madam yes okay interview skills all these 21st century skills are required so that is the basis of it for interview communication is important your knowledge on the subject is really important so how you present yourself your body language is important all these are really important again in uh, we all these criteria will be taken care by the training department okay ma'am thank you welcome thank you ma'am okay anybody else please raise your hand if you have any doubts or you can uh, type it in the chat also manimar sir you have anything to add okay okay chetan chetan reddy is here raise his hand yes chetan thank you shiva ma'am for your marvelous presentation we are so happy with it ma'am it gives brief clarity about credits and then everything ma'am okay you are welcome chetan i would like to add about the online courses also we have the opportunity of uh, taking online courses also for that also we include credits and uh, using coursera our students have started learning during this pandemic situation we have got licenses thousand licenses we have received so far and it has been distributed and our fact uh, students and faculty members are taking lot of courses from coursera which is again an international platform so all these international exposure will really be beneficial to our students okay there is a question from abhishek nigam so amidst the lockdown situation our faculty worked hard ma'am for training us ma'am but is it enough ma'am to become industry ready without having any practical hands on lab etc please throw some light yeah so that's a wonderful question uh during this lockdown situation it is very difficult so without uh, without teaching anything we don't want to leave our students and that is the reason why all teachers throughout the world has taken that pain to jump into online mode of teaching actually we are not trained for online mode of teaching but uh, as i told we all have to be lifelong learners so the teachers have learned how to uh, do it in uh, online and they have done it well really it has to be appreciated while coming to industry ready right now uh, we we cannot do without practicals it is very difficult to teach a course as i told experiential learning is very important but at the same time during this situation we can also try some simulation work a lot of simulation uh, tools are there we can make the best use of it and we also can make use of virtual labs and remote labs so there are uh, virtual labs and remote labs facilities which are available with different universities that itself is a different uh, area which we need to learn in depth to handle those virtual lab and remote lab with the help of virtual lab and remote lab definitely we can become employable um, i mean industry ready that is not a difficult task so we should be able to adapt to any situation it is not like only if i have the physical lab i'll be able to work with it nothing like that whatever is available that is what i told you vuka vuka gives you lot of problems say using the same vuca we should also be able to see how to transform that situation transform that problem Thank so uh, practical hands on is not that easy to do it but we can definitely learn uh, virtual lab and remote lab and do it thank you ma'am so even self learning is uh, uh, much more useful this time thank you ma'am there is a polytechnic staff uh, mr srinivasan asking us which engineering branch is most effective now Uh, we opinion. cannot just we cannot say particular engineering branch whichever engineering branch you are doing all engineerings are all now nowadays it is all multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary only say if you say in previous days automobile engineer 
or a mechanical engineer they will be concentrating only on the car say they uh, mechanical engineer means they can manufacture bike or two wheelers or car that's it but nowadays you don't see a automobile engineer doing alone uh, a car done by only an automobile engineer if you go to a hyundai uh, factory you can see lot of electronic engineers there what is their role there it is all because of the sophisticated equipments inside the car so for all that you need electronics engineers so without electrical nowadays the cars are made uh, electrical vehicles are coming in so in that case electrical industry electrical engineers role is also there so we cannot clearly tell this engineering is good or that engineering is good all engineering are too good all engineers have good jobs all engineers have wonderful opportunities it is up to us to make use of that course so how depth in what depth i am studying what passion am i studying how am i going to adopt all these courses into my life how am i going to implement or uh, inculcate or take other skills into my into the 21st century skills how am i going to take it into so all these only can tell me so we cannot clearly tell this branch or that branch all branches are good so you need to uh, reflect upon yourself and find out which branch i am interested in because you will be uh, inclined to a particular field say uh, certain people will be inclined to computers working with software working with writing programs coding they'll be so much interested in it but few of them they don't like to sit in front of computers or coding and all i am they will they are not uh, they are they want to do something with hands only mechanical work uh, removing parts connecting all that so whichever you are more inclined to that particular course you can adopt but all engineering are equal and nothing is superior to the other one that that was awesome answer ma'am and we have another uh, 12th standard student emmanuel pratyush chand asking us uh, uh, what do you think is the best course for industry 4.0 i have just That's completed no, my I, 12th standard okay. yeah you have answered for that also i think that is uh, the answer i gave will be sufficient for that question too okay so all in uh, savita <laughs> we are concentrating on all the emerging trends whatever is required for industry 4.0 that courses will be offered in all the programs so whichever program you take all these courses all courses will be uh, industry 4.0 focused only so you need not worry about it best wishes emmanuel and we have another uh, uh, manikanta asking us he has just completed ece uh, and i want best industrial training okay so hope you will get it don't worry okay so if there are uh, no more questions we can end up the session thank you ma'am thank you sir thank uh, you i request uh, Ra raj raj i i request raj rajeshwari ma'am to thank uh, shiva ma'am hello good evening everyone no need of thanks no sir we are all part no of it we are all part okay. of our college so you are part of us ma'am uh, in this juncture i i wish, uh, i would like to extend a sincere thanks to you uh, for uh, giving us a very good presentation on the topic finland education system at sgc let us know your presentation was wonderful ma'am it was uh, consistent throughout and it gave us all the clarity i think all the participants from outside they have gained good clarity about what we practice in sarita engineering college so i am very thankful to you for this uh, presentation and i am also thankful to the team uh, our coordinating team uh, dr pravin kumar dr nagapen dr manimaran sir dr anand and all others for uh, choosing the right topics for the right time so uh, i thank them all and i thank our management principal and all the and dean and all the hods also at this juncture for uh, Uh, coordinating with us in arrangement of these webinars which is helpful to the students thank you very much ma'am thank you everyone thank you i would like to thank our management principal hods deans and the team which have uh, which gave me this opportunity to talk about our education system education model at savita nehru college i'm so happy to be part of this team so happy to present this here Uh, so thank you so much for the team who has given me this opportunity thank you thank you ma'am audience uh, uh, so your feedback link is here so before that we would like to uh, say about the forthcoming uh, webinars 
so this was today and uh, we have professor e. gandhi dean uh, industry institute interaction to talk about global placement opportunities on 25th june thursday and your favorite talent show is on 28th june sunday as usual 5 to 7 so welcome for all these sessions thank you so much for your uh, presence let me put up the feedback link just a minute just a minute And so we will be announced and the prices will also be announced don't worry Vaishnavi says please arrange the fourth webinar daily okay so we will convey this to our team and we will try to do whatever is best possible Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Okay. Can you... Raji, ma'am, thank you.